Hey guys, good morning. Um, I am checking in with a little daily inspiration. Um, last couple weeks I've been traveling, actually the last couple months I've been traveling, and it's been an amazing experience. And so um, I wanted to jump on and do a little daily inspiration for you. Hey Joe, hey Angela. And I'm gonna do a Let's Talk Life on the MindShift Coaching Facebook page in about 10 or 15 minutes. Normally it's at 12 p.m., but I am coaching a group of students at 12 p.m. today, I'm covering for another coach, and so I will do it a little earlier. Hey, Sonny, <laughs> good morning. Hey, Joey. So today's inspiration, I have this little cup of inspiration that someone gave to me. And so today's message is, every day may not be good, but there is good in every day. Well, that's for sure. And so what I can say about that is an experience that I recently had with um, coming back. Yes, I am early, Joe. <laughs> I'm coaching a group of students at 12 noon, so um, I'm not going to be able to do my, my Let's Talk Life at 12 noon. I'm going to jump on MindShift Coaching Facebook page in a few minutes and do that one separate. But what I want to say is that with this message of mine that we just got here is, um, let's see, every day may not be good, but there is good in every day. And so I did post on Facebook um, a little bit of the things that I was going through on Sunday. I was traveling back from a whirlwind um, coaching session conference in Phoenix, Arizona the week before. I was at a Reiki yoga, Reiki yoga retreat. Um, it was amazing, completely transformational. I'm doing a lot of deep work on myself so I can be my best self for my clients and for the people I surround myself with in my life, um, including you guys, <laughs> my Facebook friends and family. And so what happened was is I don't sleep well when I travel. And so for me, sleep is really important as it is for everyone else, but I really do require a good seven, eight hours of solid sleep, but I haven't been sleeping well when I travel. And so the last night of the travel, um, a bunch of coaches and I had rented a house. And so, you know, we sat around and we were talking and then we were laughing and we were sharing our, our experience at the conference and our takeaways and some of the things that we're going to do when we get back. And so we stayed up really late. And so I got up at 4 a.m. and I was out the door at 4.30 to catch the 6 a.m. flight back to New York. Um, that night, though, the night before I left, I had a, a thought came to my mind as I was putting my yoga mat in my car um, that I left my laptop in Phoenix. And I, I laughed to myself because I was like, I am so careful about my things. I would never leave my laptop anywhere. And so I just laughed and I, I kind of brushed it off. But it was like this vision that just came to me out of nowhere. I was walking back inside from my car. And so whatever, 4.30 in the morning, I'm out the door. I'm on the way to the airport. I get on the plane. I'm about maybe 45 minutes to an hour away from landing at JFK. And I have my laptop bag there with some books in it. And I have my journal and some other stuff. And I get a message on the plane. So I have a messenger from one of the girls that stayed the house with me. And she's like, I have your laptop. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you don't. I have my laptop. I look at my bag and clearly I did not have my laptop. And so I was, all of a sudden, I instantly started going into, okay, now what am I going to do? I have a group of students that I'm coaching at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. I need my laptop. There's software on there. Like there's all of these different things. And so I just took a deep breath and I was like, okay, <laughs> this is a lesson. Some, something, somebody or something is trying to teach me something. So what does this message mean for me? And so I just messaged them. I said, please just FedEx it overnight, whatever it is. I'll, I'll wire you the money. Um, just please do that for me. So I need to have my laptop. It showed up Tuesday morning, and I worked through it using an iPad that I had. Um, so I was able to get at least my video conferencing and my coaching group done. And it, all, it all worked out. And so the moment I realized that, there was nothing I could do about it. I just stopped stressing. Like it was no stress, no drama. It was okay. My laptop's in Arizona. I'm landing in New York in a few minutes. What am I going to do? I have work. I have, you know, people relying on me. I have my private clients. I have my um, groups of students that I coach. What am I going to do? And so whatever. So I just, I get off the airport. I'm really tired. I had like two and a half hours sleep. 
Um, I don't have my laptop. <laughs> I'm going home. I'm going to run home, shower quick, and go to a service. My my friend's mom passed away, so I was going really right from the airport, shower quick, and go over there. Um, just it was like a really crazy day, but I felt so calm and so at peace. And it was bizarre. And I took a picture of myself as I was walking through the airport, and I posted it. And some of you might have commented. And I just felt like I was at complete peace, even though I had a whirlwind of a day. Um, I didn't have my laptop. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do and how I was going to get, you know, the software that I needed and everything that I needed to be there and be present for my students for the next day. Um, and so I get a text message from Delta saying, your bag is coming through, a notification, your bag is coming through on the carousel, right? And so I fly a lot, so I am a Sky Miles member and I'm a Sky Priority member, so my bag usually comes right out. Hey, Dylan, hey, Nikki. And so I'm sitting there and my bag comes out. Now it's a new bag I just got a couple days before I left. Um, and so I see the bag, I got the notification, there the bag was, I grab it, I run outside, I get in the car, and we drive home. And so we're about 15, 20 minutes away from my house, so about maybe 25 minutes already driving out from the airport, and I get a phone call, and Delta's calling. And I'm like, okay, why is Delta calling? <laughs> Whatever, I probably left a book or something on the plane. They do that. They'll call me. And so I answer the phone, and they're like, hi, Miss Cassano. I said, yes. Um, we have your bag. And I said, I have my bag. And he goes, well, can you check the name tag <laughs> on the bag that you have? No, I didn't see the name, clearly. But I turned around, I looked, and it's the same exact bag as mine. And I'm like, that's bizarre. It's my bag. And then I see a little tiny blue ribbon. It was really tiny. Like, I didn't notice it. I, and I just said, oh, okay, this is not my bag. Now, whose bag is this? <laughs> this poor person at the airport. And Believe me, I travel a lot. I would be, you know, I would feel a little frustrated and upset if, if someone took my bag, even though it was an accident. Um, it certainly was not meant to be. I want my own stuff, not someone else's. And so I said, okay, we're going to turn around. And we turn around and go back. And I just start laughing because I'm like, what else is going to happen today? My laptop's in Arizona. My bag is at the airport. I have someone else's bag. Like, what else is going to happen? And I'm really, really calm. Hey, Annette. And so I'm paying attention to how I feel because normally I would have normally in the past, I would say I would have gone into feeling very anxious um, and upset and worry. And what am I going to do? Oh my God. Well, you know what? It'll work out. There's nothing I could do. My laptop's in Arizona. I'll get it. I'm going to the airport to get my bag. So I go back in and there's this young girl, maybe like 13 with an, with an older woman. Um, and she's like, Gina, Gina, is that you? And I was like, yeah. She's like, thank you so much for bringing, this is the young girl. She's like, maybe 13, 14. Thank you so much for bringing my bag back. I was like, you are so welcome. I, I apologize. It was my mistake. Um, I have the same exact bag. I just got it. You know, and, and I, I was going to explain the whole thing. Delta sent me a notification. I saw the bag. It came out at the same time. I grabbed it and left. Well, I didn't bother going into it because it didn't matter. I was just sorry. I was very sorry that I had inconvenienced them and I had their bag. And, um, you know, it certainly wasn't my intention. And so the woman was also like, oh, you know, they, they were fine. Um, I walk into, they showed me where the office was. So I walk into the Delta office and I, and there's a man standing there who was a chaplain um, for this group. <laughs> so there was a group um, and he was very upset and he was not understanding. And that's okay. I mean, everyone's in their own mind, in their own world. But I have to tell you, you know, I, I felt like he was trying to scold me. And that's okay uh, because I still was sorry. Um, I wasn't feeling like I was being scolded, but I feel like he was trying to scold me and be, be very angry. And I just said, I'm very, very sorry. It was an accident. I'm sorry. And, and he starts saying to me, you have your name on your bag? You have your name on your bag, right? And I was like, I do. And I'm still sorry. <laughs> I do have my name on my bag, yes. <laughs> and I am still sorry that I took the wrong bag home, you know, the first time in my life. I travel all the time. You know, it was just a combination of things. No sleep. I was a little caught off guard by not having my laptop. And I was figuring out where I was going to go and how I was going to get. Now I was even running more late. And I had this service for my friend's mom. And 
all these things were going through my mind, but I was still feeling this internal peace that I've really only felt once before. And that's a whole nother story, but I've really, this is not a common thing for me. Like I do feel at peace, um, but in a situation like that, to feel this level of peace and just calmness and being able to say, okay. And I laughed because I laughed at myself. You know, I was very sorry that these people had to wait. Um, hey, Carolyn. Hey, Audra. And it is what it is. And so there was nothing I could do. I just, I was sincerely apologetic um, and I meant it. It wasn't, you know, I wasn't being a wise ass or anything like that. I was very sorry. I took, I took the wrong bag. And so, you know, I'm a human. We're all human and things happen. And yes, I should have checked the bag um, tag name and I will be doing that going forward. <laughs> but what the lesson for me was is that all of this work that I've been doing on myself, this deep transformation, um, this deep inner work of letting go of any anger that I've had from my past and my past experiences and the traumatic experience that I've gone through, letting that go has completely served me in the most beneficial way that I could have had that day, I could have ruined that entire day for myself by how I received what was happening for me. And that, that to me was the message was, you're doing all this work, this is so powerful. Now look, you have all of these things happening right now, and it wasn't the end of the world for sure, but it was a lot of things happening that I could have easily gotten worried and stressed and maybe freaked out about, um, and I didn't, and I was still very calm. And I just, I needed a nap <laughs> and I, I laughed at myself and I was like, I, maybe I should just go home and go to bed. But I had, you know, a priority, my friend, I wanted to be there for my friend. And so I did. And I got there 15 minutes before the service ended and I was just glad to be there. And then we went back to the house and I was, I, I spent some time with them that way. But what I realized was all of this work that I'm doing on myself, it was blatant, clear I have reached the moment that I've been working so hard for is that I'm not holding it in. I am not going to let it fester. I am not going to get angry or upset. It is what it is. Like there was nothing that I could do. The only thing that I could do was control how I felt and I felt calm and at peace and I choose to be happy. And that's a choice that I make every day. I wake up every day and I choose to be happy regardless of what's going to come my way. And, Things come my way, just like things come your way and things happen, you know, and there were moments in my life where things were happening to me, but it's not, it's happening for me and it's for my growth. It's for my evolution. It's for all the transformation that I've been doing. So I can be the best life coach for other people and help them get through whatever it is that they need support and accountability for. Um, and it's working. And that was the message that I got. And so the message that came today it was so funny that this is the message that I picked today out of my daily inspiration jar. Every day may not be good, but there is good in every day. And so that was a perfect example. I can't even believe I picked this message. <laughs> that was a perfect example, right? Like I could have turned it into such a, a bad day and, and freaking out and worry and hate on, but I didn't. It was my laptop was in Phoenix. I was at JFK. I was on my way home. I had someone else's bag. I had to go back. I was late for the service. Like all of these different things were happening. And I was at, at such a level of peace and calmness that it was almost a little freaky <laughs> because I, I was, so, I surprised myself. <laughs> um, not to say that I'm not always trying to stay calm and, you know, think about, all right, what is this message? What is this? What does this mean for me? What can I do? What can I control? I do, but this time it really worked. It just kind of happened. And it was, that's the part of practicing and working so hard, so deeply on yourself and whatever it is that you want is I was working on my own self for so long. And then finally, boom, it hit. Now it's no longer a habit that I've created. It's a part of me, that calmness, that inner peace, that tranquility, that, that, um, that willingness to be open to whatever is about to happen. Hey, Jen. Hey, Steve, you know, so that willingness to be open to whatever's about to happen and, and just trust that I am exactly where I need to be at this moment in time. That's so powerful. I just experienced it. And I wanted to share that with you. And, um, and, and that's really the message for today is, you know, this was the message that I picked. 
um, every day might not be good, but there's good in every day. And I've just lived that. And it was really, really cool. And so I just wanted to share that with you that all of these things that I'm doing, yes, I'm going, I'm continuing my education. I am working deeply on um, learning new and um, deeper transformational mastery skills. Um, I'm about finishing my certification right now, so I should be getting that momentarily. And then I'm on to the next phase of my coaching journey, which is focusing on deep dive into the business aspect of it. Um, and that's a whole nother program I'm about to start. So lots of good happening. I just wanted to share with you that, you know, life happens for you and not to you. And that lesson that I learned the other day when my life could have been like just turned upside down, it wasn't. It was just, you know, what do I have control over? This is what I'm going to do. This is how I want to feel. This is how I want to be. This is how I want to show up every day, not just for myself, but for everyone else in my life. Like, it's not just about me. It's about also the people in my life, the ones that I choose to surround myself with, right? And so I choose to surround myself with people who also want to improve or are also on a journey of self-improvement and figuring out what it is that they want for their life and what they want to do and how they want to live and, and the types of relationships that they have. I mean, relationships are so powerful. You get to choose what type of relationship you have. Now, I not only coach people in relationships, intimate relationships, but I also coach relationships where it's parents and, and their teens, right? How to communicate effectively and, and how to get your message across and actually be open to hearing and listening to what the other people are feeling. It doesn't matter whether they're your child or your friend or your partner, right? What matters is, is how you communicate and what you want to see come out of that. And so all of these things that I'm working on really help build that. And so I get to integrate it all into my business. I come back. I feel even more empowered than I did. Um, I have this fire in my soul that is just continuously burning. And I love it. And I get to share that with my clients and my students and everyone in my circle. And I absolutely love it. And so the message for you is, you know, life is happening for you, not to you. Just be open to what is possible. And you get to choose how you show up each day. You get to choose how you show up each day for yourself. You get to choose how you show up each day for the people in your life. You get to choose. So what do you choose to be? What do you choose to feel? How do you choose how will you choose to show up today in the conversations you're about to have with people when, when you jump off this live video? How do you want that, that relationship, right? Will the action um, you're going to take build trust and strengthen that relationship? I don't know. We'll see. But I just want to share that with you, a little daily inspiration. Have a great day. I'm going to jump on shortly and do a Let's Talk Life. Um, I should probably look to combine these at some point. <laughs> I really like these random. So have a great day. Thanks so much for joining. Um, jump on the Mindshift Coaching Facebook page in a few minutes. I'm going to jump on there. Let's talk life. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And think about um, who do you want to be when you show up. Have a good one.